Hey guys, and welcome to game number 61 out of 100 of my Human vs. AI series, where I'm taking on the AI-powered Scrabblebot best spot in a 100-game match. We're currently at 27 wins, 33 losses, so 6 games behind the bot, which is a place we've been close to for a while, but I'm hoping we're going to be able to decrease that by 5, especially since I'll be starting off this game with a bingo of Aconite. Now, it's interesting, because I could play here for 74, which is my highest scoring placement, but it's not good defensively. It puts three different vowels next to those double letter scores. So I don't think it's actually crazy to consider sacrificing a couple points and playing it in a safer placement like this one. It's worth mentioning it also takes the front T for Taconite, so playing it here would be a major no-no for that reason. I mean, you could do it, but with five Ts unseen, taking a lead, it seems rather foolish. You'd also play it over here. So, I mean, there's options. I, I do think it's worth sacrificing the points. Four is a bit to give up, but again, I mean, I'm... Giving back so many easy 40-point plays next to that I and that E. I'm not really that worried about the A because it's next to the C and the C can't be overlapped, but putting the I and the E there is, is definitely dangerous. So I think I think I'm gonna go with probably I think I'm gonna play it right here, just because this makes it a little bit tough to play some sevens with the C right there. I feel like this is probably the best one defensively. So let's let's play over there. Definitely a little bit unlikely to sacrifice four points right out of the gate, but again, putting that I in that E there, I mean, it, if he has a Q and an X, obviously, for QI or XI, it gives back a lot, but even something like, I don't even know, Hue, H-E-W, is just like 40 points there, whereas now it's not going to score nearly as much. And this, this makes sevens and just other overlaps much more difficult in general. So given I'm taking a 70-point lead, I think being a little bit more on the side of caution is reasonable. All right, a bit of a vowel-heavy pool here. Five vowels, but not the worst. I should be able to get rid of some of these. I could play something like Aeon, A-E-O-N. It doesn't score very many points right here. Only 11 points. Anything through this T, like Emanate, Manatee, and Amada. None of those hit the double-double, though. I don't think there's any other options through that T that would cover both doubles. And that's going to be a moot point, because the bot plays Burphy, which does take an S, right? I'm almost positive it does. Don't think that's going to really give me much. Actually, a B would have, uh, I just realized, a B would have given me a Mebian if he had given it to me in a spot where I could have played through it, which I didn't even notice before. But not going to matter here. Okay, anything through this UT now? Auto men. It doesn't hit the double-double, though. I mean, it's not a horrible play, but probably could do better. So maybe next to Burphy I can play here and score a bit and also block. Oh, I guess I could play A on here now. That's 18. It mostly blocks. I mean, there are words, of course, blank, blank, NS blank, or, or longer that could still go there. But it still restricts that spot a bit. So that's got some merit. I could score more with something like this. I believe is a lot weaker, though. A-E-E-M is considerably worse than A-E-M. It's an extra vowel, and the M is nice, too, just uh, as a scoring tile, so that if I don't draw a bingo, it'll still hopefully give me some options that I wouldn't have for scoring if I kept all one-pointers. So I think I'm leaning towards this at the moment, unless I can find something more appealing. But it's going to be tough, I guess. I wonder if I have anything with... Obi. I mean, I can play Oma here too, but that doesn't really make a ton of sense. I guess Aeon over here, but that's fewer points and not as defensive. Anything here? Not too much. And I don't really want to put an M there anyway because of the smut hook. So yeah, let's play Aeon. That looks pretty good. Okay, so still a little bit Val heavy here on this pool. And he gets down a bingo of beauties through the A. So the Taconite hook is now mostly a moot point, most most likely. It still could potentially come in handy for like a bingo ending in A and T or something, so we still want to keep an eye on it, but it's certainly not as dangerous a spot as it was before. Here I feel like Minion's got to be right. 45 points. Keeps EE, which isn't the best leave, but it's uh, already turning a little bit constant heavy the pool. 43 constants, 25 vowels, because we've both played a good number of vowels to start off the game, so this is not that bad a leave. And again, 45 is a lot of points. It's going to be hard to get nearly that much elsewhere, so let's do it. All right, looks interesting. I've got readied. Uh, does it play? It doesn't fit with dare, right? There's not enough space yet. Yeah, unfortunately not. Anything on the right, like through the T or the D maybe? 
Uh, it doesn't look familiar. I feel like if there was something through the T, I would have recognized it very quickly. Yeah, like radiated doesn't work. I need two A's. I don't think there's anything through the S either, as far as I know. And Vugs is probably not going to help me. I don't have anything through the V. So unfortunately, this may be a rack where I have a bingo on my rack, and it feels like I should be bingoing, but I just don't think I am. There's nothing to this N in Minion. Or from the N and Akana. I don't think there's any A to an N, period. Yeah, it's a, it's a tough one because it feels like there really should be a bingo. And that happens often. I mean, you just, you just feel like there's a bingo on your rack, especially. You feel like there's got to be something that plays. It's a pretty good rack. Like, I don't have any particularly bad tiles. And that's what can make these turns tricky, too. Even if I didn't have a bingo, like, on my rack, forgetting that part, just trying to figure out what to do, because, like I said, it's not like there are any tiles I have that are bad. So, without a clear foothold for a scoring spot or something I want to get rid of, it's a little bit tricky to figure out how to approach this turn. And he, there's no double-doubles to this eye, right? I think the only possible sevens would be readied anyway. Uh, there's nothing else. No. Okay. So, nothing there, as far as I can tell. Yeah, I mean, again, there's just nothing I'm like, I guess if I, all else being equal, if I can get rid of one of my D's and one of my E's, that's not a bad thing. This is fine. It's not a great lead, though it's still a little bit Val heavy. Maybe something with Dare? Problem is, whatever I do is just not going to score all that much, really. Have a little bit of a lead, but not a massive lead by any means. I guess I could also just completely blow up the rack. Something like Rated. There are two blanks left. I mean, it's not the craziest idea ever, either. It's de definitely an interesting turn. There are, are options. I, I don't want to do something like Add and keep three valves like that. That's just definitely not necessary. At that point, you're much better off just blowing up the rack. I don't think I'm missing any sort of scoring spots. Yeah, I mean, the best spot for overlapping would be next to Aconite, and the only tile I have that goes next to Buy is the D. ADE is not a word. Yeah, there's just not much. RE-DE gets rid of both of my E's. I don't want to do that. So, yeah, there's... I mean, there's just Ed or DE, which are not particularly good, I don't think. It's also like, especially if I do this, I block the, or I mostly block the T, which is one of my best bingo tiles with a slightly Val heavy leave. It's not a great board for bingoing with this rack, because like, as we were seeing, ED7s don't even play. So I don't really think there's a lot of merit to, to doing that, to be honest. I feel like I'm more inclined to just play Rated and blow this back, blow this rack up. Maybe Aided to keep a R for a little bit of balance? I don't know, but the problem is it just gives back a lot with that A, putting it next to that double letter, either for a play through the triple or down the D column. So I'm not too keen on that either, whether it's that or rated. So like all my plays here kind of have drawbacks. Idea here gives back a lot of overlaps as well. So it's very difficult to find a play that, I mean, nothing scores anything, but to find a play that's good for my rack and scores at least reasonably well and doesn't give anything back. I guess I could just play maybe maybe died over here for 17. I still think that's better than Ed. Yeah, I mean, AER is a pretty good leave. I think that's probably fine. It's either that or rated. It's probably close between died and rated. I think I'm going to go with died, though. I don't really want to give back that spot if I can help it. Yeah, this is definitely a questionable play. I've already spent a while, though. I should probably move on and, and do something. So yeah, let's uh, let's just do that. Wow, I just drew four vowels. That was unexpected. Goodness gracious. Wow, okay. Well, I might go from that to having to trade here. I definitely didn't see that coming. It was a fairly constant heavy pool and I drew four vowels. And the bot bingos with two S's and a blank. Yikes. Okay, well that was not the turn of events I wanted at all. Uh... Sheesh. How am I going to respond to that? Do I have anything from that T and pistols? Not much. I mean, I can do something like this. AOU, though, is horrible. Anywhere to play Aurei or Urei? I mean, 
yeah, I can play it here for nine. It's not particularly exciting. Ugh. Hmm. Is there anything worth playing, or should I trade? I feel like I really don't want to trade. Like, my rack, I went from having a bingo on my rack to now feeling like I have to trade? Maybe O? Yeah, 16. That's, that's worth it over trading, I have to imagine. Hate getting rid of the E, but at least I get rid of three vowels and keep my only consonant. Yeah, that's still got to be better than trading. It's probably the best option I've found so far. I just don't really know what else there is. I guess there's auto or outa. I don't think it's worth nine points to keep the E, though, especially now that I'm at a deficit. It's not the craziest idea, but I just don't think it's quite worth it. So, yeah, I mean, I don't know what else there really is. I think uh, I think we're going to have to do this, and hopefully I'll get some consonants. Eh, I did, but I've got all these one-pointers now. That's the problem. And the bopping goes again. Dang it. This game started out very well for us, and it has uh, things have gone south very, very quickly. I mean, there's no, like, G for agitator or B for abattoir open. I feel like I've got to open a line on the left. I think Oat here is probably in order. Doesn't really score much, but nothing's going to score much with all one-pointers. Opens a line on the B column, down almost 100. I'm going to probably need two bingos here, or a bingo on something else worth a lot of points. So, let's do this. And now I get the Q, and there is no U open for Tranquil. So, not good. Not good at all. I mean, I do have Trank over here at least, so that helps, but... It's still not good. There's also QI if that gets blocked, but this is extremely, extremely counterproductive. Just completely shutting down the lane I was trying to open. There's also Quinn over here. So we'll see what the bot does, but if it stays open, Trank is going to have to be best. Yeah, Lingy for 32. I mean, I'm down over 100 points. I need to get as many as I can. And maybe I'll draw something through the Y. I guess you never know. I'm going to really need that blank, I have to imagine, to have any chance of winning at this point. But we'll see what happens. Looks like a decent rack. I don't think it's... Well, actually, there is a bingo through this B, believe it or not. I can bingo with sightable. And the bot keeps... Whoops, why is it not... There we go. My L key was stuck. Uh, yeah, I mean, I think I have to do this, right? There's no other bingos. And look, I'm creating some chaos. There's two triple triples open. I'm still going to be down 50 in a turn. But if I draw the blank, I mean, and the bot could have some bad stuff... I think I have some chances. Not a lot of chances, but some. Well, now I probably don't have a lot of chances. Two H's and two W's. Wow. That is, uh, that is a rack I can confidently say, guys, I have never held before. E-E-H-H-K-W-W. -W. I mean, it's, like, actually not probably the worst rack ever, because... There is some scoring opportunity, but I really need to bingo here. I have the last ease. This is like, I mean, hard to even process, though, this rack. There's so many duplicates. I guess I can play, like, chew? Trade six? Whoa. Trade six? Do we have uh, some signs of life here all of a sudden? What do we make of that? Okay, hold on here. So I'm down 50. The bot trades 6. Well, I have to imagine it's got the blank now, right? Because let's think about this. If the bot... Well, either the bot already had the blank. There were, so there's 12 in the bag. 19 unseen. The bot had 7 tiles. Either it already had the blank, or if it didn't, then it, it's picked up 6 more tiles. So it's going to have seen... 13 tiles out of the last 19 in its last two turns. That's pretty likely it's got the blank then. It's probably even more than that because sometimes I had it before it traded. So, yeah, I mean, that's not good. It's very, very unlikely I'm going to be seeing this blank, and I'm probably still going to need it. So the problem is, I, I mean, something like Wu over here creates this spot for swag. Which, I, so I, I guess, guys, the question I need to ask myself here is, do I have any chance of winning this game if I don't get the blank? If I think I need to bank on the blank, this is actually a great play, because then if I draw the blank, I could draw something like Sheik for 80. 
Well, it's not quite 80, actually, but it's about 70. And that might be enough to win. If the buy has the blank, I guess I could still draw something, like, through that C. I mean, there's a j I could draw, like, jacked or something and maybe still outrun it if it gets a swag play. So that's interesting. That's one option. Another option, which is more kind of standard. Not going to play cheat, keep HWW, but chew for 36. Keeping, you know, a leave that's kind of awkward looking, but also has some scoring potential. I have the last ease, which is pretty valuable. It's like, what? so what do we make of this trade six? The, the bot have probably like a lot of consonants is my best guess from that pool. But if the bot traded six, that means there's probably a lot of dreck in the bag that I don't want. So playing fewer tiles might be good, although the W is kind of dreck, and getting rid of the second one with Wu might make some sense. Here's the problem, though. Like, if the bot has the blank, it's probably not even going to play with swag. It's probably just going to play from the C, and then play with swag next turn. And then I can't really do anything about it. There's also that Z on the right. Like... You know, one thing that's nice, actually, about Chu is I keep WH. If I draw one of the two eyes, I get Wiz for 57. That's a lot of points. Yeah, I feel like with that there, and, I mean, the buck could have Frizz, but it could also easily have nothing through that Z. I feel like between Chu, like, I'm still down a bit, but if I can draw Wiz and the bot redraws its bad tiles, I think I have some chances, guys. I feel like this is better than Wu. Unless I'm missing something else, but... This is such an awkward rack. I also have some good potential to score to that Y with stuff like Hokey, which I don't even know will be enough. Maybe even Jokey if I get the J. I think I might have some chances to outscore it, though. Like, I have a hard time imagining I'm going to bingo. And again, I think with Wu, I'm just... I'm all in on drawing the blank. And I feel like if I draw the blank after Chu, I'm probably winning a lot anyway. So... I don't know. It's a really tough turn. I think I'm going to go with this, especially with the eyes unseen for Wiz. All right. Well, I got the eye, so that's Wiz for 57 right there. Um, wait a minute. Hockeyer is not good. Oof. Proxy for 51. Um, okay. So now I've got another decision to make. I can score on the bottom for a lot. Or I can play Wiz. Yeah, hockey or is definitely not good, right? It's just hockey and hockeys. Almost positive. This pool is very weird. D D F J M V. Down 65 points. It's a lot of points. There's uh, a huge J spot looming here too. I wonder. I mean, if proxy could even be like a J setup potentially. Hmm. See, so yeah, a wager is 56. Wiz is 57. I imagine one of those has to be the play. Unfortunately, this doesn't save Wiz. That would be ideal. I don't think I want to know. Just playing Wag is too big a point sacrifice. I guess... See, here's something interesting, though. If the bot, if the bot didn't have the J... Then, if I play Wiz and I draw the J, I'm threatening Jaeger for, like, 90. Which probably wins the game on the spot if the bot doesn't go there. So, that's interesting. And Proxy was a lot of points. Like, I don't think it's necessarily, you know, inferable that the bot had the J or drew it. Like, it, it probably did. Also played Proxy really fast. I mean, if it kept J.O., like, that's just filthy. <laughs> Soaring for 51, setting up, like, 60-plus on your next turn. I, I just feel like after Wager, I don't know, keeping K.H.I. into that pool with one still in the bag and about having Tempo. There's also the spot above Jun, which scores, like, 40. So I, I feel like, guys, either way, if the bot has the J, it's probably winning this game. So I probably should bank on drawing the J, because, like, if I'm going to lose, if, the, if I'm assuming I'm going to lose if the bot has the J, which I think is a fair assumption, most likely, then I might as well assume I'm going to draw the J, logically speaking. Because there's no point in playing as if I'm not going to draw the J and trying to win if I don't think I can win. So I might as well try to draw the J. And I think playing Wiz gives me the best chance if I draw the J. I don't, but I draw the blank. 
I have Lekvars. If it plays Jog, I bingo out with Lekvars and win. Wow. Now the question is, if the bot plays on the left, what happens? I don't know. Three minutes to figure it out. Well, three minutes. Eh, dang it, it did play over there. Now it's threatening. Yeah, this bot is too smart. Uh, really wanted to bingo out with Lekvars. Obviously, I have to block Jog. It's a lot of points. Down 30. Yeah, it's threatening Jun and Joe, too. Dang it. Um, Moglev. It's probably not enough. Yeah, it's not even 30. J.O., yeah, I'm going to need 30 points with this. It's not happening. There's no way. Um, see, after J.O., it's going to have Dig, which probably goes out in several spots, too. Um, yeah, probably can't win this, unfortunately. There's no other bingo, right? Nah, no way. I don't think so. Huh. Welp. Logger, does that do anything? KV blank. Yeah, again, the bot's just going to play Jun and Joe. It's still 38 points. I'm down 40. 39. Well, I need 29 points to tie with this. There's nowhere to play Kiva or Kava. That isn't going to do it. Don't think. Uh, how about this? Oh, I mean, I have move and lev. That's a bit. Still probably not enough. Or under chew. I think I lose by like eight. It's close. Problem is I, I don't have any tiles that go above this O. So I can't really score there. I just can't outrun Joe, unfortunately. I just they, I just don't think I can. I feel like if I had something with L... If I try to save Cough, but on the top left, but like with L-E-R-V blank or L-A-R-V blank, what am I going to... What am I going to do there? I don't know. There's no eights through that M in Trank. I haven't really looked, but I'm pretty sure there's nothing. I'm down to 30 seconds. Yeah, obviously I have to block Jog. That's 60 points. Yeah, I'm not seeing it. If it's there, I'm just not seeing it. So, yeah, Cray is the best I got. I think I lose by like 8 or 9. Oh, well. Dang. Yeah, there's nothing else. Shoot. Lost by seven. That's a tough one. Man, I feel like I should have won that game. I don't know. Let's see. There was, I assume there was nothing I missed in the end game here, right? Let's see. Yeah, no better place for Lev. I can't imagine there's anything better with Cray. Oh, Dark Clear. That's pretty cool. Yeah, no, I mean, none of these plays even block. That's cool, but it doesn't block Joe. I don't have any plays with REV on the right that score all that much. Yes, yeah, isn't enough points. I saw that. Or Nave. But, I mean, LR Blank is just not scoring. Well, that doesn't even block Joe. So, it actually accomplishes nothing. It doesn't block Jog. Yeah, there's just nothing down there. I mean, oh, Barker. That's pretty cool. But LV is accomplishing nothing. Nah. I think I, I think Cray is actually probably my best, my best play. I think I played a good endgame there. Just, uh, yeah, it turned into a great game. Just couldn't couldn't quite make it happen. It's frustrating, but so it goes. All right, let's look. Yeah, again, interesting decision here. I mean, maybe I shouldn't be sacrificing the four points, but I think it's fine. It really does limit his options. Wants me to play Ulma, but, I mean, Moogle like, really tends to overvalue these three valve leaves. Like, it has AEE, and it's actually positive equity, which is honestly completely misguided. It, it's definitely negative. You don't want to be keeping three vowels and a constant, if you can avoid it. Yeah, minion has to be right. It's too many points. Volgate, but doesn't play for the bot. Oh, maybe re-add. Yeah, like this turn, I just I just couldn't find anything. 
Oh, I didn't see dead over here, too. Okay, yeah, I, I really didn't play this turn well at all. Like I said, these turns can be really hard, where it's like, you just, there's no standout play. There's nothing clear you want to get rid of. I just, I saw a DE. I, unfortunately, I didn't think of area. So yeah, dead here is probably the best play. I mean, re-add is also fine. It's a lot of points. IE, obviously, not a great leave. But yeah, no, died is, uh, is, I mean, it's not like a horrible play, but it's just not good. Like, there's a lot of plays that are a bit, like, a bit better, but obviously better. So that was not good. O seems fine. I mean, I'll, I guess TR is also reasonable. EOU, though, oof. I mean, I think this is okay. And then the bot bingos again. Um, I didn't see this. Again, that's a cool fit. But I think Oat is fine. Again, I'm down almost 100. I need to open some lines. I'm happy with Oat. Uh, interesting. Wow. Really? Huh. Didn't want to play tying for seven more and not open the triple-triple at this score. So this is a very interesting play. I mean, so obviously the logic is the bot is thinking like, yeah, you put the Y in the triple-triple line, but the odds of me actually triple-tripling with a Y in the fifth spot are really, really small. And presumably smaller than it thinks if it plays tying, me hitting like a big bingo from this G that doesn't catapult me into the lead, but still gives me enough of a chance to win. Wow, that's a very interesting play. I, I feel like I would have played tying here, and I think almost all humans would. I mean, it's natural instinct to not want to open up a triple-triple when you're taking a 100-plus point lead, especially when you have another option that scores seven more for a, a lead that's slightly worse but not materially worse. So actually a really interesting decision by the bot here. Definitely, I can see why it would do that again. I mean, it's, you know, the, it, it, in the long term, it leads to a much more closed board because you don't open that floater on the right like after the you play to the Y, then the right hand side of the board is pretty close like i get that it just does give up a bit of uh there are a lot of short-term disaster scenarios through that Y. but i guess they're so unlikely that the bot felt it was worth it so interesting uh decision by the bot there trank looks good yeah but okay so the bot had the j for a long time uh okay so here what did it do trade so also oh, wait it traded the j here oh interesting I almost, yeah, I guess with all these other high pointers on scene, you don't want to trade the J. So what did it keep? It kept, kept just the O. Interesting. It's slightly constant heavy, not like super constant heavy, but I guess that makes sense. I mean, it's a bad board to have a lot of consonants. So interesting play by the bot there, though. Again, trading everything instead of taking 38 immediately. But yeah, wait, yeah, why wouldn't you keep, keep the J with that open? Okay, that's actually interesting. Like, I get not playing Lori keeping JMV or something or Quorum. But with J-O as a backup, why why not save J-O in trade 5? I mean, the J also, you could get something through that C. You could hit Jocko for like 80. You could hit Jokey on the bottom. The J seems like a good tile on this board. You have guaranteed 38 on your next turn, which is a lot of points. I mean... What are you going to get other than the blank that's so much better than the J? Like, the X is honestly not... The J is probably better than the X on this board, right? Because normally the X is better, but with Jun there? Wow. Okay, th this is one I'm pretty perplexed by, guys. Like, I, I... I mean, normally the J is a bad tile. I get that. But you're not really trying to bingo on this board with that pool, are you? At this lead? Like, I don't think the bot's trying to bingo here. So why, why not hold the J? You're, you're still turning over five tiles for the blank. You're still getting a lot of turnover. And you guarantee yourself a 38-point play on your next turn. Like, I'm almost definitely not going there. I don't know. This, this one's baffling to me. If you guys have any idea why you think the bot traded the J, and I don't think it's just extra turnover for the blank. Like, I don't think that's a big enough reason. But if you guys have any ideas, let me know, because I'm, I'm pretty confused why it wouldn't keep the J. Yeah, man, this turn was tough, too. I thought about this. I thought... Of, oh, I didn't think about it there. That's interesting, too, actually. I wonder... You know, I wonder if that's better, because it also sets up possibilities like Hauk. But again, I think this is fine. I score more, and I have such a good chance of hitting Wiz next turn, which I indeed did. And so now... Oh, so the bot didn't have the J with Proxy. And it redrew it at some point. Yeah, I mean, I think, like I said, I think Wiz has to be right. Oh, there's also Higari. Well, I don't want to empty the bag. That's terrible. Yeah, leaving two in the bag is also better than leaving one in the bag. It makes it a little harder for the bot. And I think, like I said, I, I, did, I, I didn't necessarily know the bot had the J with Proxy. In, case, in fact, it didn't. And, wow, what a heads-up play by the bot, though. Not playing Jog immediately. I mean, so many people would just be like, oh, 61 points. 
But you empty the bag, and I would have bingoed out with Lekvars for like 84 and one on the spot. So, I mean, I, th this is one I feel confident I would have solved too. It's like, okay, you have a 60-point play with a J, and you have a 38-point play with a J. As long as you do something reasonable on the left that blocks bingos, because, I mean, like, yeah, if KV is in the bag, I'm probably bingoing on the right anyway. Um, well, maybe. It's not that easy to bingo with an N earlier in the early in the word, but I'm sure, yeah, like, say if KR is in the bag, then Anfield comes down. But, like, th the point is, the majority of bingos that I could have are going to be on the left hooking on. So the bot by playing form, uh, or from rather, excuse me, uh, interesting, I, I guess, it, see, normally I would think form because it sets up another J spot, but the bot doesn't even need another J spot. It's already got two huge ones. So it's actually uh, makes it just easier for me to overlap, if anything. So yeah, that's a very heads up play by the bot. Again, you go up 30 with a blank unseen, but you know you have a 60 point J play and a 40 point J play, basically, if that gets blocked. So you're blocking a lot of immediate wins, which I did have, and you're still pretty much guaranteeing you're going to win in the end game if I don't bingo. So, totally makes sense. Like I said, I like to think I would have been able to come up with that. I do think I would have, but uh, very heads up play by the bot. And yeah, like I said here, I, I'm, I'm not going to bother to put this one into Quackle. I feel very, very confident that there was uh, there was no win here for me. Like I said, there's no high scoring play I missed, and I have to block Jog. It's it's over sixty points. Uh, and there's just not really a good way to do that. I mean, like I said, Lager doesn't really leave me any good outs that I see. So, yeah, pretty sure I had no win here, guys. If, if you guys uh, manage to find something that's better than, than Cray, that especially that wins, definitely let me know in the comments. I'll, uh, instead of putting it to Quackle, I'll leave it as an open-ended puzzle to see if anyone can come up with anything better. I do feel confident it doesn't exist, but I've certainly been wrong before. So if you see anything, let me know. But otherwise, um, yeah, I mean, it was a very good game. You know, I'm, I'm disappointed I lost, but... I feel like I played pretty well. The The dive turn was bad. I spent a really long time and just didn't come up with a, a good play in the end. I mean, not a horrible mistake or anything, but just not a good play. Like, I, I can do better than that. Other than that play, honestly, you know, not really unhappy with any particular decision I made. I feel like I played a pretty good game. And, uh, yeah, the bot made a few interesting plays, like uh, Lingy and that, that trade not keeping the J. Also really curious what you guys' thoughts are on the not keeping the J on that trade by the bot. So... A couple really interesting turns there. Uh, like I said, it was a roller coaster of game. It started out really well for me, then the bot was up like over 100, and then I very, very nearly came back. So I'm glad I at least made this a game. Like I said, tough loss, but uh, it happens, and overall happy with how I played, and glad it was interesting. So that is a wrap for this one, guys. Uh, thanks so much for watching. As always, look forward to hearing your thoughts in the comments, and I will see you soon for Game 62. Have a good one, guys. Thanks again. Bye-bye.